Welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to explore the PyDub module. PyDub is the library in Python that's used for audio manipulation. Basically, anything that comes to mind when you think of the words audio manipulation, PyDub can do it. Whether you want to increase the volume, decrease the volume, decrease or increase the volume of specific parts in the audio track, whether you want to trim it, uh, or you may, maybe you want to extract certain parts of it, you want to loop it, or just loop certain segments, whether you want to overlay several audio tracks on top of each other, etc. There's so many other things that PyDub can do, set the frequency, etc., frame rate, all those kind of things we can all do with PyDub. Basically, you can create your own audio management software using this library, so long as you give it a good UI. Okay, so let's explore how to do that. Now, I'm gonna try and begin over here from file, and then I'm gonna try and import this library, countdown.mp3. You can see these two audio clips over here that we're gonna be using in this tutorial, okay? And I'm gonna do format is equal to mp3. These audio segments that you see here are basically the, the backbone of this entire library Everything is an audio segment basically, and these audio segments have various methods that can be used to manipulate the audio. Now, normally if anyone ran this, this code would not work. This is because uh, it requires a library called FFMPEG. You may have heard of this, it's very famous, it's very commonly required when it comes to audio or video manipulation or reading or anything like that. The truth is that it's kind of complicated uh, reading and you know playing various audio and video tracks. They all have their own encodings. PyDub, or more specifically Python, is only able to play .vav files. Not sure how to pronounce that, but it's only able to play these files natively. But as we all know, MP3 is pretty much the most common format, so we need to be able to read and play these somehow. So that's where FFMPEG comes in. So what you're going to do to... Oh, okay, ignore that. So you're going to come over here and come to FFMPEG and then download and then whichever platform you are. I, I'm on Windows, so you can just download that. Okay, this is where I store all my stuff. So this is where I downloaded my FFMPG file. And then you can see the exe for it over here. So what you can do is either take this, take the path to this bin file. And if I just do this, so I'm just going to take this over here. And then I can add this to my environment variables, which is what I have currently done. So if I run this code, it's going to run without any errors. Okay, so you can see that this executed without throwing any errors. That's because I've added this to my environment variables. And if you don't know how to, how to do that, let me just show you. Okay, come here, environment variables, come down to path. Then you can just click new and then add it. You can see this right here. Okay. The other way of doing this, for those of you who don't want to go through this entire hassle, is that you can do audio segment dot converter is equal to, and then you can do this and just this, okay? And it's gonna work out, all right? So that's a more convenient solution depending on your requirements and platform. So yeah, let's continue. Now, uh, that's all the issues solved. Uh, actually, wait, there is one more issue. If you wanna play audio, now I know this is a lot of hassle. If you've just begun the video and there's all this dip dependencies and setup that we need to do, but this is just uh, the way it is if you're going to be dealing with audio or video because of the various codecs and stuff, and it's, it doesn't really make sense for an audio manipulation library to attach all that kind of stuff. You know, it'll just, it's, it's not really meant to do that. We already have libraries that are meant to play audio, and they're good at doing it. So this is how you play audio, but again, it's not going to work unless you have the required setup. The setup or dependency for this is that you install this library called uh, Pi Audio, or you can install Simple Audio. You just need to install it 
uh, what's going to happen that if you install either one of these libraries, then PyDub is going to uh, auto automatically detect this internally. It internally looks for these libraries, and if you have it installed, it's going to play it. Okay? Uh, I mean, it's going to use it to play the audio. So if I run this now... 10, 9, 8, 7... Uh, I just canceled it early, but basically that's a countdown. And yeah, that's our audio. So now that we have all our setup out of the way, let's begin, you know, manipulating it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, let's start off with something really simple. Audio is equal to audio, and then we're going to extract the first one second. Okay. That's how you do it. These are milliseconds, and you can use indexing to, to, access a, to access specific parts of the audio. So, you know, just like you do regular indexing, uh, 0 to 1000 gives you the first 1000 milliseconds. And, you know, so let's just play this. Okay, I didn't hear anything. 10. Yeah, okay, I guess there's nothing in the first second. That's why we didn't hear anything. So we can just... 10. Yep. All right. So what else can we do? This is a very basic thing. It's very simple, super simple. You know how to do list indexing. We can just like, for example, if you want to exclude the first one second because there's nothing in it, we can just do this. 10, and it's gonna... 9, 8. See? Uh, and again, we can also do cool stuff like this. For example, we want to take the... Uh, everything from one second to two second and we can take the everything from three seconds or let's go a bit further five seconds to six seconds okay so basically second one and second five. Ten, six. pretty interesting right so that's and you can imagine all the various things that we can do with list indexing to easily extract different parts of the audio so let's just bring that down a bit to the first three seconds, excluding that empty first second. So what you can do is like, um, let's do this. Okay. 10, 9, 10, 9. What did you notice there? Basically, it looped. That's what multiplication does. It multiplies the audio clip. And similarly, you can do plus, and then you can add 10. That adds 10 decibel, decibels onto it. 10, 9. That was a lot louder. Hopefully, the recording is working on that. Um, and then you can also subtract the volume and Ten, make it smaller. 9. And if you wanted to only make a certain part of the video, of the audio, sorry, smaller, in volume or decrease or increase it then you can just take that specific portion like we have here and then decrease the volume or increase the volume and then concatenate that back into the rest of the audio so that's how it would be done there isn't really a nice function for doing that unfortunately uh, so you'd kind of have to do that manually uh, other than this we can obviously um, do some cool stuff let's see what else we can do uh, you may want to figure out how to you know, what the current volume is, right? That's uh, something that you'll definitely need. So you can do dBFS. Now, uh, the dB, you can understand, probably stands for decibels. I'm not sure what the FS stands for, but I do know this property stands for the uh, relative volume compared to the maximum volume in the audio clip. So 10, 9. Let me just actually remove this for a bit. Or just comment that out. Okay, so what this does is, is that this is the, uh, let's just remove that too, for now. Okay, so this is the overall, I think, volume of the clip. If you, if you do it for specific portions, uh, you'll get more meaningful results. For example, uh, millisecond zero, which you'll get minus infinity. That means zero volume. Then uh, we can do it for like uh, second one. And then you get minus 58. I guess this is when the person is about to begin speaking. If you bring that up a little bit, you'll see it's getting higher because the decibels, uh, the negative values are lower. And 
positive values represent a higher sound. Other than this, you can check out some other properties like uh, frames, no, duration, seconds. This one's useful. This one's actually useful. It'll tell you the duration of the audio. So this one tells you it's like 13 seconds. Let's check this for the background music that I have here that we're gonna use in a bit. So that's about uh, 341 seconds. It's about six minutes long. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do some fade in effects. So we can do something like uh, audio dot fade in and 5000. Wait, whoops. Okay, so if I play this. 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay, so did you notice that, that the volume of the person speaking was gradually increasing? Uh, that's what the fade-in thing does, it begins gradually, so that's a pretty cool effect. You can also do the fade-out effect, just by changing this from fade-in to fade-out. Uh, same thing, but it's going to be on the end of the audio clip instead. So, one thing if you haven't really noticed, let me just say it, this is all immutable. The audio segment class is immutable. Any operation that you apply on it, it's going to return a new object, okay? It's not going to modify that existing audio clip. It's going to make a new one. That's just something to remember. So don't try doing something like this and then expecting the first five seconds to uh, be a fade in effect. That's not going to happen, okay? It needs to uh, return an object that gets stored somewhere and then you play it later, okay? And now let's discuss the what I mentioned in the beginning of the video, audio overlaying. Again, something pretty common when you're making a stream or recording like I am right now, you may want to add in a, a background, background music. So what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is first, just duplicate that over here, change this to background. Okay, and then just change that over there to background. Now I'm going to do, uh, let's just, just call this combined. Okay, combined audio. Combined audio. And over here, I'll do audio.overlay. Now the one that you want to overlay something on, like you're speaking, that's the primary source. You want to overlay uh, background music, which is the secondary source. So the primary source is what you should be calling this method on. And the secondary source of audio is what should be in the parameters of the overlay function. Okay. Now the rules for this are as follows. If the background clip is longer than the audio clip, this one, then the primary source is just going to be cut off. So the background, the we saw earlier that the background music was like six minutes long almost. So what hap what's going to happen is just it's just going to be you know cut off at the 13 second mark. 13 seconds being the length of this uh, audio clip, the primary one. Okay, and likewise, if this audio clip was smaller, if the background music was smaller than the primary source, then it's going to loop. Or actually, I don't think it's going to loop. I think you need to make it loop by using the loop parameter. Not sure why it's not exactly in my IntelliSense, something's off about, about it, but uh, you just pass in loop is equal to true, and it, you do this in the case that your uh, secondary source is smaller than the primary source, okay? So enough talking, let's uh, do this. 10, nine, eight. Hmm, that was a bit, uh, louder than expected okay um now this is in this kind of case you want to lower the volume of the overlay method i mean sorry of the secondary source you want to make it smaller so i think it was like something like this i may have to look this up because i do not re really remember okay i had to look it up because uh i didn't really remember it but basically it's called gain during overlay and we can like decrease the volume. That didn't really work out. More.
I think I've got this in reverse. There wasn't really much documentation on this. 10, 9, 8, ah. 7. All right, we've got this one on. All right, so um, I hope that didn't hurt your ears, but what you want to do here basically is uh, give it a give it a positive value in the case that the background music is too high. Uh, now that I think about it, we could have just uh, decreased the volume of the background like this, minus 20. 10, 9, 8. That's way more reasonable than what I was going for, uh, which we're now getting. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how you do it. I think it's just easier to, to do it this way, honestly. It gives you more control over either one of these. Uh, but yeah, you can do whichever. So yeah, that's the end of this video, and hope you guys found this useful.